Welcome to our series on how to work with objects in rituals. So, in the first video I would like to talk a little bit about the working with fruit and the use of sacrifice. Whenever we want to work with an object, there's actually three factors which come into play. The first factor is, of course, the amount of energy. If something has no energy or adds no energy, then there's really no point in using it. The second factor is the type of energy which is being added. So you have elemental energies, you have life force, and you have astral energies. And by using different yeah, objects, you can also have access to these different yeah, kinds of energy in your ritual. Life force is the most useful one in many ways because it helps to uh, fuel a transformation process. Um, all the other energies are very nice for inviting a power, but it just being there and leaving doesn't have much of an effect unless there's enough life force to create a transformation. The other factors are the complexity of the energy and finally also the, you could say, the level of the energy and how high or how low the vibration is. So what I want to talk about here is the use of fruit. Uh, you can of course sacrifice many things, you can sacrifice um, chickens, you can sacrifice goats, uh, but also you can sacrifice fruit or you can make a meal. You can sacrifice your own blood, uh, but blood magic is another topic altogether. What we have, if we use fruit, is that the amount of energy is quite good. Um, the fruit itself contains a lot of life force. Um, it is in a way just like a little baby with still its full life ahead of it. So it's just packed with energy, so a lot of energy coming out of it. The type of energy is of course life force. It doesn't have much in the way of experience. It is not linked yet to a very specific path or karma. So there are no elemental or astral energies to speak of. If we look at the complexity, the complexity is quite low. And low complexity has advantages and disadvantages. The biggest advantage of low complexity is that it will mold itself. So if I am working with a ritual and I have a certain purpose, a certain flow I'm trying to create, then the uncomplex energies will just follow the mold and go along with that pattern and reinforce what mold you have created for the energy. So create a mold, have some sacrifice, and then the mold will fill up with the energy of the sacrifice. If you use a more complex energy, you in a way want that energy itself to be its own mold or um, to add its complexity to what you're creating. And here it becomes a little bit tricky because of course you have the um, on the one hand the energetic and magical necessities and on the other hand you have the cultural and political and social imperative. So ideally if you're working with a ritual you would just want to have some fruit to work with to a very pure life force but fruits in general don't represent a lot of wealth everybody can go to the forest and pick some and for a person to show their importance well a sacrifice would need to be unique it needs to be their prize bull or their prize boar or something like this or not just one of them but ten of them and here we in a way leave the realm of the magical or mystical but we go into the social and political realm where in a way sacrifices are more 
about status, the status of the priest or the status of the person doing the sacrifice. One other way in which it can be very correct from a magical perspective is if it is a sacrifice which is, is about giving something up, about um, showing the importance and of course by yeah, giving some fruit, some berries I'm not putting a lot of emphasis, I'm not showing like this is the most important thing in my life but yeah if you sacrifice your own child or your own life or your own blood you're showing that this sacrifice has a great importance, you place a lot of emphasis on it and that emphasis itself can be an important part of the ritual but if you're doing just a more or less normal ritual which is not an initiation or something else where a person really needs to show a lot of conviction um, but if it is just a healing ritual for instance then the fruit are fine so now how to use them because fruits are all quite nice they can be quite tasty um, but that doesn't mean much to a spirit what is essential when you're sacrificing anything is that they are yours to give because right now these fruits are basically just their own they have their own path, they have their own ideas of how they will grow into trees and shrubs um, and ultimately I need to get control over these energies to make them mine and then make them available for whatever purpose I'm doing the ritual for. So the first step is that these fruits should accept me as their, in way, their guide or their guardian or their master or something of that nature. And buying them is not enough because we as Western humans may think that everything is about money and that if I have a bill of sale then I control something but the spirit within <laughs> has very different ideas it does not really understand that concept of slavery or wage slavery the way modern western man does for them the master is not the person with more money or with more power but it is the person with the higher consciousness, the higher goal, the higher purpose. So the berry here has its own idea. Like, okay, maybe I will feed a bird, maybe I will feed a mouse, maybe I will grow into a tree or in, into a shrub. That's the horizon of its own purpose. And it is looking to me as its guide to give it a higher purpose to say like yes of course you can be eaten by a mouse uh, or you can eat, be eaten by me or by a bird but instead of giving up your life force just for yeah continuing in existence you might want to give it up for transforming a, a person's existence moving them onto a different track into a different trail of life and in the same way as I can be your guide, you can help move a person from sickness to health, from being blind to being an initiate, from being a person who has a very horizontal awareness to becoming a priest or a priestess. And thereby I can, in a way, help them to change their karma to move their karma from being in a very horizontal plane of continuing on the same level life after life, incarnation after incarnation to moving in a way upwards or spiraling upwards through their incarnations by getting them involved in processes of growth of consciousness of growth of awareness, of making lower energies into higher energies then you don't have just a continuation, then you start to have an evolution. And in this way, 
the fruits and the spirit of the fruits, the powers of the fruits, uh, will also benefit from their own sacrifice. They're in a way giving up their lower energies, their life force, so that their spirits will get positive karma, will get an influence, a spark, a habit of moving forward, of transforming lower into higher. So this is ultimately the, uh, yeah, the offer I make to uh, whatever I use as a sacrifice if, and ask it if it wants to participate in this. So to do this of course you need to have some channeling skills to be able to commune with the spirit or if not with the spirit at least of the guide to the guides or to the nature spirits or to the nature deities so that in some way you can get their cooperation um, depending on what exactly the task is i either go to them directly or i go to indeed a higher spirit so if i need basically plain pure life force um, and then I can just go to them. They understand life force, they feel their own life force, they feel their own energy and they can say like okay instead of it following my pattern and my spirit I allow it to follow your pattern and your spirit and then the life force of the food will in a way gather around you and whatever motion you make with your hands or voice um, it will be amplified by the life force of the sacrifice. So your own life force will be joined by the life force of your sacrifices. So the healings you do, the actions you do in ritual will have a lot more power to them, will have a lot more strength to them by using the sacrifice. If it is a more complex thing though, uh, like I really want to get their knowledge, their guidance, uh, certain of their qualities. So I'm looking a little bit more for the complexities. And this is especially true if you're in a way sacrificing a more complex being uh, like an animal or um, working for a more complex goal like an initiation or a more complex healing where you don't just want to have a little bit of life force. I try to involve their natural masters. So in this case of fruit, the nature spirit or the nature gods and goddesses. Um, so a personal favorite of mine is working with Artemis, also called Diana in the Roman tradition. Artemis is her Greek name, who is the goddess of the hunt, but also the goddess of the wild places and the people who live in wild places who gather these fruits and these berries but also the animals, the birds, the bears, the mice, also gather all the fruit and the berries. And by working with Diana, all these energies are in a way given to her as their natural mistress. And she can create a mold, she can add the complexity to them. So instead of using the consciousness of the pig or the bull or the lamb or the chicken, you use the consciousness of the goddess or of the greater nature spirit of that region to create a mold for these energies to flow into. And then the mold which Diana creates is how the energies will manifest themselves in the ritual, in the healing space. So it is very uh, important if you're working with these other powers that you don't know just about how to work and what to sacrifice, but also how to work with the energies, how to massage and manipulate the energies to exactly the thing you want. If I would just grab these birds and plump them into the ritual space and uh, destroy them somehow so they cannot hold their energies anymore, of course, that's also a way to release the energies. I can crush them, I can burn them, I can chop them to bits. Um, but then I would have to manage their energies by myself. And I would be, in a way, 
you could say, raping them, taking their energies from them against their will, instead of doing it with their consent. And with their consent it might take a little bit longer, and you will have to do it in a way which is also in concordance with their path. But I think this is much more worthwhile, much more beneficial to do it in such a way which is full of love, full of respect. Um, because also the energies which are given to you will naturally align themselves, cooperate with you. So you end up also expending a lot less effort in working with them. In general also working with things which don't have a lot of complexity yet, or don't have a lot of path yet, is much easier because they don't have to sacrifice their path, their goals, their dreams to work together with you. If I would grab a person off the street and say like, you uh, become my student, then the person is very likely to say no, because they have their own job, they have their own path, they have their own goals, and yeah, becoming my apprentice might not be what they want might not be even the correct path for them, maybe their spirit is wanting to do something completely different and I would be deluding them. But if I catch a person who is in a way wandering or lost or seeking and looking to define themselves, um, then the presence of a guide or an inspirator can be helpful to help them to find their path or to sniff on it and um, then to move on with more experience. So also ending the life or the potential life of these fruits, yes, you're ending one thing, but it is the spirit who is moving on incarnation after incarnation, cycle through cycle, and it is the spirit very much which is looking. And fortunately plants and animals don't have the same level of attachment to their egos, to their present selves, to their physical yeah, bodies and to their physical surroundings that humans have. So humans are very poor reincarnators, are very bad at sacrificing themselves, are very bad at being selfless, at being servants. But most things in nature long to serve, want to serve, want to cooperate because they are longing for something higher, for something greater, something to aspire to. And in the same way that we have spirits, we have muses, we have beauty, we have art to guide us and to inspire us, they are looking towards us as humans to fulfill that role, to inspire them, to show them a higher path, a greater principle, a greater purpose to life than mere existence. So thank you very much, Fruit, and thank you for listening.